I never really understood why wrestling fans get criticized often for wanting to know what's happening behind the scenes in wrestling. It is literally no different than the NBA, the NFL, the NHL, the music industry, Hollywood. Uh, it, it's no different from a TV series or a Netflix movie. But for some reason, wrestling fans who want to know more behind the scenes get criticized for it. And I guess I'm just trying to understand why. Now, of course, this is going to open up comments for a lot of people with different takes, uh, diverse opinions and all of that. I see some people will agree. Some people will disagree. But I'm here to talk about this because I was watching Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson and he had The Undertaker on his show and it was incredible, honestly. It was a really cool episode. I like The Undertaker. For those who know me, know that I'm a huge fan of The Undertaker. And I, in particular, I like the idea that Mike Tyson is just a wrestling fan. Uh, he spoke about some of these characters that he resonated with back in the day and you know he was talking to The Undertaker and he was just like a fanboy and he really fell in love with with these characters and the undertaker kind of talks about this too but basically what ends up happening is it gets brought up that wrestling fans care more about the behind the scenes stuff these days now i think to a certain extent that is true but i also don't think the iwc is the vocal majority for all pro wrestling fans but i also think it's like a balance right now hypothetically speaking if the wwe or aew put out a really good television product the focus from fans should obviously be on the television product. But if AEW and WWE are putting out a bad television product and their television product uh, is suffering because of backstage stuff, then obviously fans are going to want to know more a little bit about why the backstage stuff is happening. And then, of course, they want to see their TV show improve. So by being invested in behind the scenes stuff, they'll be invested more in seeing how the television product evolves. Now, we have seen this time and time again where the AEW product may have not been as entertaining, but then more people were talking about a, you know, alleged backstage brawl. Obviously, for reasons, you know, that was that was a talking point when people didn't care about the TV product. They were talking about that. So at the end of the day, uh, I want to play this clip really quick and then we'll kind of jump into it. Um, so right here. And Muhammad Ali saw him and that's why he started doing this. What's that guy's name? The gorgeous old, George. Gorgeous George, yeah. Yeah, yeah Muhammad yeah. Ali saw him and he emulated him. Mm. Look how beautiful I am. Am I beautiful? <laughs> yeah, isn't yeah. that true? Yeah, Ali was a big, big wrestling fan too. Big man. Yeah. Hey, listen, the white people love wrestling, keeping it real, because it's a soap opera for men. Mm -hmm. You know, when we get attached to those guys, we want to know more about them, we stay in touch with them, we get mad when they lose, mm -hmm. you know, we celebrate when they win. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that right there is a huge point that I want to bring up too. Social media is relevant now. So you have the ability now more than ever in 2023 to connect with wrestlers however you want. Now, some wrestlers actually do respond. Now we'll continue. It become a connection. For yeah. sure. I, you know, I saw Bruno San Martino and that guy was almost crying. <laughs> he's, yeah, he was, listen, he defended the title. He beat everybody. Don Leo, Jonathan, the Wolf Man. John told us them finally. Peter uh, Morales, man, he beat Wolf Moon Dog Man. He beat them all. Yeah. Beat them. Mike Tyson again is just showcasing how much of a fan he actually is of pro wrestling, and we'll continue. Them all, yeah, he beat them all. Till Billy Graham took his title. He had, he had it for twelve years already. Yeah, yeah. Bruno had a long, long run as champion. It's really unheard. I, I mean, saw all his defenses. Yeah. Stan the Man Stacy, I kill a Kowalski. Yeah. Them all is defensive. No, that, that's a real good point you bring up, Mike. I remember even growing up, like how invest, like I remember like, how invested I used to be and Listen, how upset I'd get. Yes, yeah, somebody lose. Oh, somebody lose. Yeah. Me and my boys, like we were like, no, there's no crying, way. Right? Like, there's no way. Rock's losing. Like, there's no yeah. way. Like, and I so keep in mind, his co-host is talking about how invested he actually is back when The Rock would lose, right? And now, obviously, back then, social media wasn't a thing. Now that social media is actually more prevalent in wrestling and you have the ability to connect with them and see more behind the scenes. By the way, WWE on Peacock, WWE, AE, A and E, AEW doing their own stuff on YouTube, showcasing you behind the scenes moments of, you know, when Cody Rhodes returns to WWE or whatever it may be. You are more connected to these wrestlers now than ever. Thanks to modern technology and thanks to these reports. So back then, if you were that invested, imagine how much more invested you'll be now when you have all of these things right at your disposal, you know, with the click of a button on your cell phone.
I used to get so hot when when he would lose. Spiros so Arion. The, he used to do the um the drop kick. I mean the knee breaker. Boom, crash the guy's spine on his knees. Yeah. Yeah, it's um yeah, that that's it, it's funny because I think people it, that people use it especially they used to use it as an escape, escape. right? Because yes. yeah. you had your whatever character was out there, you had somebody for I mean, there was somebody for everyone, mm -hmm, right? For everyone. And, you know, it was it was cool that people could lose themselves in their reality. It's amazing now. So now I'm going out and doing, uh, you know, my, my one-man show, mm -hmm. which for my whole career I never talked about. I didn't talk like this, right? Mm -hmm. if, it, if it wasn't Undertaker-related, mm -hmm. you didn't hear anything from me. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. That's the reason why there is an intrigue with the Dead Man talking show, right? Like this whole thing of... Undertaker doing these live shows, he goes to Cardiff, he goes to SummerSlam, he goes to all these events, and he talks to a crowd of wrestling fans. It's because The Undertaker always respected kayfabe when he was outside of the ring, he always stayed in character. Now The Undertaker doesn't do that, and obviously there is a lot of money that could be made from this. So now that I've retired, and uh, so I'm going around doing doing this one-man show and talking about kind of these kind of stories mm -hmm. and everything, it's amazing so I'll do, I'll do a meet and greet. They um, love Andre's story, though. Oh, yeah, they love, yeah, they just. Wait for they're, it. They're again, yeah, they want to hear all that behind the scenes stuff. They do. And the thing is, they want to hear the behind the scenes stuff because at the end of the day, it is no different than a sport. Now, obviously, the WWE and AEW don't do trades. There's no free agency market. There's no off season. There's no sort of trade deadline. It's not like a, you know, typical sport. But at the end of the day, hearing about roster moves, people getting released, people getting, you know, frustrated with their creative booking. It's almost very similar to what we experience with everyday sports in America. Same thing with the music industry. You hear about record deals and, and all of these things. And before they go down, you want to hear about them. So at the end of the day, I never really understood why people get looked down upon for actually wanting to do this stuff. Now I will say to a certain degree, like, of course, anything that's reported, you always got to take with a grain of salt. Uh, I feel like that's just kind of like a no-brainer. I think that's common sense. Just because a reporter talks about it doesn't mean it's 100% accurate. I also think the 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 big thing, too, is like, you know, there's just certain things I don't personally talk about, right? So on YouTube, I don't talk about wrestlers' deaths. I don't talk about any of that because I don't want to profit. I don't want to grow my YouTube channel based on a wrestler dying. There's also no sort of opinion or analysis that I can give to you that would be valuable when a wrestler dies, right? So just by me putting it into the video or talking about it or in the tags or the description or people leaving comments on it, I just don't want it to be there, right? Um, so I've never like, aside from that though, I, I do enjoy learning more about wrestling and what's happening behind the scenes, but I also make it very, very clear. I care more about what's happening on television more than anything. So if the product is good on TV, then I'm not necessarily worried about the behind the scenes stuff unless it's potential signings or releases or, you know, wrestlers taking time off or injuries because some of that stuff actually isn't disclosed publicly. So it's a very strange thing. When you watch this clip with The Undertaker, you might not think anything of it, but then when you watch the full episode, you can kind of tell like there's moments and The Undertaker is one where it's not the first time we've heard this, but it doesn't sound like he likes people you know, being so invested behind the scenes. And I just think it's really not that big of a deal. Again, I just kind of want to talk about this. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, but also, everybody's going to have a different opinion. So we'll talk more, and I'll see you next time.